throughout this video, I just want you to know that I am not a musical expert. I'm not a vinyl expert. I'm simply a collector. This is just what I do for my specific collection and what I have learned slowly over the past four years of me collecting vinyl. So if you guys have any helpful tips and you want to help people with things that I may not even touch in this video, please leave it in the comments down below, respectfully of course. Hi guys, so today I'm going to go over everything to do with my entire vinyl record collection. I'm going to tell you guys everything that I know and what I do to protect my vinyl and enjoy it to the best of its ability. So today we're going to go over how to store your vinyl records, how to protect your vinyl records, what you can do to help keep them clean, and then I'm going to go over my entire setup. I have discussed it in my last record collection update video, but just to give you guys a little more in-depth look at what my setup is, and also tell you guys about some of the record players and turntables that you should avoid. I'm also going to briefly touch on what you can do to frame your records. We have a lot to get into, so let's get into it. Also, I apologize for the lighting. It's like a weird hour of the day. So my first ever record care system kit was this RCA one. I got this from Half Price Books and this is also called a disc washer. So it came with this cleaning liquid, um, this record cleaning solution. Mine's actually almost empty. I've honestly owned this kit for freaking years, but it all came in this little black kind of velvet bag. And then it came with this, which is my favorite. This is a disc washer and it's made out of this really nice wood and it's a nice little like fabric scrub. I love this. You guys can see I use this all the time. I think it's fantastic. And then this is the arrow for the direction that you're supposed to actually go with the grooves. So you wouldn't want to be going this way with it. You want to go this way, if that makes any sense. So I always go around mine counterclockwise. And I really like this one. It seems to do the best job, but I do also have this little set that I got off of um, Amazon. So it came with this little sponge here. It's a little bit smaller. It's a lot more plush. And I don't really like this one as much. I think it's not as sturdy, but it is really pretty. And then it did come with this uh, Vinyl Alive solution as well. It's the same as the other one. So I've been using this one since the other one's basically empty. This is the anti-static brush that I use. It's by Vinyl Style, and I absolutely love this one. It's kind of like a metal plastic material, but it is fantastic. So it stores like that, but you just pop it open and then you can actually hold it like this. And it's got two pretty thin lines there of bristles. And these bristles are a lot thinner and softer than the other one that you guys saw. You can kind of see there, they're so soft and they're a different type of material and they really like to stick onto obviously hair and dust and things that you want to take off of your static vinyl. I did go to Target and get this little like bin organizer, which I'm super excited about. This was like a dollar and I'm gonna actually put all of my cleaning stuff inside of here to help better store it. And I'm just gonna kind of put the stuff that I don't really use in this little baggie here. Next up, I think it's super important to protect your vinyl themselves. So what I love to do is use record sleeves. There's so many different brands that you can look into to get record sleeves, and there's obviously different um, qualities when it comes to them, but this seems to be my favorite brand. I did try out another one um, that I also got from Half Price Books. There's only like a pack of 20. Didn't really like those, but I really like these. So these are also by Vinyl Style, and it's 100 sleeves. I think this pack is like $15, $20 on Amazon. Super affordable. And these are just poly sleeves and they fit one standard single or gatefold record. So if you have a gatefolded jacket, um, they also work on that, which is fantastic. And they're just stored like this in this bag. I just leave them in here, but they are just a plastic material. 
and these are great. I really like these. These help to prevent you getting any wear on the outer cover of your vinyl or having it crease or wear off or get ripped or anything when it goes next to another vinyl. So that's why I really like these. I think that it just helps uh, keep the album cover itself intact and obviously protect your vinyl from like dust and other things like that as well. I also have a bunch for my singles as well. And then for some reason, some singles and seven inch records don't really come with inner sleeves, which is crazy to me because why would you just want it to be loose in the cardboard? So I do also have this. This is a 25 pack of polylined paper seven inch inner sleeves. And these are super heavyweight. So they actually have like an anti-static inner um, part as well, which is fantastic. Um, love that. If you can get anything anti-static or if you want to upgrade your vinyl to anti-static paper, I would also highly recommend it because then you really won't have a dust or like hair problem as much. These are really nice. Unfortunately, sizing for inner sleeves is a little bit wonky. Um, some won't fit back in once you use inner sleeves, so maybe that's why they don't come with it, but I think that the outer casing should fit it then. It's really confusing. So these are kind of hit or miss. Um, I've only worked with this brand before, but maybe there's another brand that you won't have that issue with, which if you guys would recommend any inner sleeve brand that works with like most of the smaller vinyl, let me know in the comments down below. These are also great if you guys go thrifting or flea marketing and you pick up older vintage singles that they don't have anything, like they're just loose. It's kind of hard to find good ones because usually they're too scratched up, but if you do, this is a great way to store them and protect them since they don't already have something. So this is where I typically store my records. This is a custom built shelf that my uncle did when he was in high school and he had um, like, I think it was called like wood, wood shop. I don't know what it was, but they would make stuff out of wood and things like that. So he actually custom made this shelf. It is super heavy. I couldn't imagine this ever being hung up on a wall. And when my grandparents had passed away, I said that I wanted this piece because I thought that it was the perfect size for 12 inch records. And it is, it's really nice to have this extra space up here. But as you guys can see, it's almost full. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the records to this. And then I did recently purchase this which is my Ikea shelving unit, which also fits vinyl records. They don't have as much room at the top, but this is pretty common for people to use for their vinyl. You can use it this way, or you can have it stand up, depending on the sizing of your room. I wanted mine to be laid on its side because it fit right next to this and then right underneath my window. So put a record on the turntable because missed opportunity if you don't while I do this. I do have a really awesome now spinning 3D printed little like shelf thing on my wall here. It's very close ended here, but it overlaps this poster up here a little bit. But I did get this off of Etsy if anyone's curious, and that's usually where I put the record that I'm currently listening to. Another thing that's pretty common for record storage is record crates. Always, always, always recommended that you store your vinyl standing up. Don't ever, 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 ever stack your vinyl. You're going to ruin the grooves. You're going to warp the vinyl. It's just not, not a good time. So always have your vinyl standing up. These crates are nice. I do find that they're a little bit tight. So typically I'm banging the side of them or the sides getting worn from this wood. So I don't know if they're necessarily the best thing. And this one was custom made for me. So I love it. Choose to use it to separate my new vinyl. So vinyl that hasn't been in a record collection update yet. So that way I know what I need to film and I don't get my records confused and I don't have to pull a bunch off the shelf. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. So I just keep them in here until I film and then they get put on my shelf. So this is where I keep all of my singles and my seven inch records and my flexi disc. 
but I don't really like how this necessarily looks so I have a few different ideas to see if I can make it look a little bit better so I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna see what we can do okay so I got this really cute gold kind of like shelf so it's just flat at the bottom and then it's like all open here but I thought this was kind of cute and I knew it would fit on here perfectly so my idea is to potentially store the records facing forward that is so cute oh my gosh I love that and then you can just kind of stand up here and flip through the top like you're in a record store that's awesome I love that that's really cool the sad thing about this though is that it's basically full like I just barely made it so it's really gonna just be temporary and then I'm gonna have to find another method. I did think about using these. I've also seen people use like makeup um, eyeshadow palette acrylic uh, stands for their seven inch vinyl. So these, I thought you could sit right here and then all you gotta do is grab some of your vinyl and you can just kind of have it stand in there. So that's another alternative. It's a little bit too long, but that's okay. And then I do have that cleaning for my mini turntable to fit. And then we can have all of my mini three inch records sit right on top. So that looks really cool. My turntable setup. So at the top, we do have the ability to lift up this top. And now if you guys are wondering, this is like a turntable at home wheel thing. I'm not exactly sure. It's my uncle's and he used it in high school for his amplifiers and stuff for his guitars. So I do have his old turntable. It's actually in our garage. My turntable is the Audio-Technica AT LP60 stereo turntable. It's just by itself. It doesn't have built-in speakers or any. It only can do 33 RPM and 45 RPM. So it doesn't do 33 and a third RPM, which some of my records are that. So they sound a little bit off, but it's not too terrible. If you guys were wondering, why I chose to have this turntable. It's because um, my very first turntable was a Crosley turntable. I remember I got a bunch of Barnes & Noble gift cards for Christmas and I knew that Barnes & Nobles had a turntable so I just went there and I bought one. I did no research at all and I started to make videos on my vinyl records and a lot of people gave me um, criticism for my turntable and I didn't understand at the time why but now I do it was like 60 bucks it was dirt cheap and so I just wanted it it was easy grab and go get it home and start listening to records however I have learned that Crosley is more about the money they're all a total cash grab in my opinion and a total scam and I'm not saying this to offend anybody that may own a Crosley turntable. I'm hoping that this will actually encourage you to get a different turntable and learn why the Crosley turntable isn't necessarily the best option, even though it's affordable. Crosley basically marketed all their turntables on the fact that they were cute, they were in style, they were small, they looked like a little suitcase. However, the materials used when making the turntable was more about the looks and a decor piece versus the actual efficiency of playing your vinyl. A lot of people told me that it was going to ruin my records, that it was going to destroy them, I wouldn't be able to play them again, that it would just skip over and it wouldn't play them. It only did this for a few records, like maybe two or three of the vinyl that I had at the time. Time. I think I upgraded my turntable once I got to like 20 vinyl. I did it pretty quickly, but it would not play. I actually just listened to the AM vinyl from Arctic Monkeys. That was one of the records that I could not play on my Crosley. It would skip, it would get stuck, and it would repeat, and I wasn't able to listen to any of the songs on it, so I was like 100% sure that the record was destroyed. But when I would clean it and I would look at it, I didn't see any scratches, I didn't see any nicks, I didn't see any warping, so I didn't really understand what the problem was until I added weight to the needle and saw that it started to play a little bit better. All the records that I had issues playing with on my Crosley, I have zero issues playing on the Audio-Technica. There is no skipping, there's no getting stuck, there's no delay, there's nothing at all wrong with it. 
I also had a really big issue with the speakers on the Crosley. Oh my god, they were atrocious. They sounded like absolute garbage. I bought some computer speakers for like $10 and plugged those in. They made it sound a little bit better, but when it comes to quality, it's really hard to get any good actual sound quality off of there. I used to also plug in my Beats Pill, which was like the best way to listen to the music on there, but at that point, what was the point of even playing the record I could just use my Beats pillow as a Bluetooth speaker. So I really don't think that the Crosley is thought out. I don't think that it's efficient and I do know from firsthand experience that it does destroy your vinyl because it's gonna just keep getting stuck on things that it shouldn't be because that's a needle issue. It's gonna create scratches, nicks. It's gonna create issues in the grooves by uh, doing that to your record. So I don't recommend Crosley's. Um, I know that they're very cheap and they're cute and they seem like a good idea, but they're really not the best option. I think Audio Technica is one of the more affordable brands. You can definitely go up the ladder and get some really expensive turntables that are amazing that have so much more freedom in the settings and different things that you can do to really amplify your music taste. I think this turntable was between $80 to $120, I really can't remember, but I do know that it also came with some plug-in speakers that were also Audio-Technica. Now I just have the turntable up here, it's what I've been using for the past two, three, four years, it's been a really long time, but it's fantastic, I love it, and I think that it works the best, I also just love the look of it. Down here we have um, all this stuff given to by my uncle, as well as this display. So this stuff is awesome. If you guys can get your hands on some stuff like this, I highly recommend it. I haven't really done too much research in terms of branding and stuff. I did used to have a different um, amplifier and like a tuner, but I don't have that one anymore because I switched over to this since these all went together and they're the same brand. These are all done by Technics. Again, these are probably from the freaking like 80s. Um, these are pretty old, but they work amazing, obviously, and I love them so much. So at the top here we have a AM FM stereo tuner. So this is just for obviously listening to the radio if you wanted to. And then down here we have the integrated amplifier, which is what I use for my turntable. So if this isn't turned on, you won't hear anything from the turntable. So this is turned on and then you can always amplify the bass, you can amplify the treble. This is where I record the volume. So right now it's at almost a 2. That's usually where I like to leave it. It's pretty subtle. It's really nice for when I'm doing stuff like what I just did now or when I'm listing stuff on my Depop. Um, or I'll get it all the way up to like around a 3 or three and a half. but anything above that is really loud and I'm super nervous that the neighbors are going to complain. And then you can also put in a pair of headphones if you choose and you want to listen to it that way which is really cool and handy but I don't really take advantage of that. And then lastly down here we have a double cassette deck so this is awesome. And the first deck you can obviously record on it or you can use it for playback and then the second one is just for playback. The only thing that's really involving the turntable itself is the amplifier and that's really helpful for controlling again things that you can't do without it so the bass or the treble and the volume and then if you guys are wondering what speakers I use I use JVC speakers I always thought that they were JBL speakers and I would say it all the time I am wrong they're JVC speakers I actually got these for free off the side of the road funny story this is my speaker I have two of them and they're actually stored inside the doors on the bottom of this little cabinet that my uncle made so it's a nice JVC speaker. You can take off this uh, muted cover if you wanted to, but I leave it on. This is the SPTHM55F satellite speaker. That's all I got for you, but they're really awesome. They work well, and then you guys will be able to see the wire connectors that we have that are plugged into the back of them, and then they are connected to the back of this whole setup. I actually had my friend do it because I had no idea what I was doing. Real quickly, one thing that I did forget to mention in this video as I'm editing it that I uh, said I would talk about is framing your vinyl records. So I have a whole separate video on this. It's basically me just framing them. So in this video, I'm just going to tell you what the best frame, in my personal opinion, is from testing out a few different brands. It is one of the more expensive ones, and it does come from a brand that I just said isn't really the best, which again, I want to reiterate, it really isn't. It's really just a frame. It is the Crosley Vinyl Album 
frame. These are fantastic and you can find them almost anywhere. You can get them at Walmart and they're pretty affordable at Walmart. They're $9.98. However, if you go on to Amazon and stuff, you're looking at like 20 plus dollars. I don't know what's up with that. Same as if you went onto the Crosley website. So I don't know why they're so cheap at Walmart, but they retail for $9.98. Sometimes if they have a bunch of extra stock, they go on clearance for 50% off. So I have seen these at Walmart for $4.48 and they are fantastic. A lot of the other frames that you can get from like Michaels or Hobby Lobby or any sort of crafting store or even Walmart themselves have their own vinyl album frame brand. They're all usually made with a metal border and I just don't really like them as much. These are all wooden and they do come in three different colors I believe. One thing that I did in my framing video that a lot of people criticized was that I just had the brown border show. I liked the brown border. I thought that it added a little more of like a vintage kind of feel. Somebody had actually commented this but I did debate on doing this uh, is to use cardstock and you can get a single sheet of cardstock from any craft store from anywhere between 20 cents to 75 cents. So I did get a few different colors here and I'm going to actually add them to my records that are on the wall so you guys can see the difference. They also make frames for 7 inch records as well if you guys are interested in those. So that is how I store my vinyl records. I do also keep them in alphabetical order. I don't know if I said that or not except for the 7 inch because it's okay. They don't need to be. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions of anything that I didn't address in this video, please let me know in the comments down below. If you have any advice yourself or any brands that you would recommend for like a cleaning kit or any type of static sleeves and stuff, let me know. I do also know that a lot of people like to transfer the sleeves out of these and they actually buy anti-static sleeves or higher quality uh, inner sleeves than the ones that records usually come with. That's also an option if you guys want to take it that extra mile. I just like to keep my records the way that they come, even to the point where I will actually actually keep the plastic on them. So these all have their original plastic on them unless they're gatefold. Anyway, this is how I store my records. This is my turntable setup. If, again, if you guys have any questions or recommendations of any brands or anything, let me know in the comments down below if you have any other alternatives to an amazing uh, first turntable for people. Leave it in the comments. Keep it respectful and I love you guys and I'll see you again very, very soon. Peace out, Girl Scouts.